from the View My Sports Studios, it's The Breakdown with your hosts, Roger Tillis and Chuck Olesker. On today's edition of The Breakdown, we're playing our own version of fact or crap as we confirm or deny certain recruiting myths. Hello and welcome to today's edition of The Breakdown. I'm Roger Tillis, your host. Chuck Olesker, your co-host. There you go. On cue, man, is the stuff. <laughs> um, we're really going to have a lot of fun today. Um, we thought we'd sidestep having a guest, so you're stuck with us for the endurance. Um, and we're going to play our own version of fact or crap. Um, you know, there's we, I tell you, we get a lot of emails. We get a lot of phone calls, messages, all kinds of stuff. And, it, it you know, we're seeing common themes. We're seeing questions and... and um, you know, you know, we're, we're getting things that come in wanting confirmation on other things that are heard at different venues. Um, they go to meetings, they go to clinics and things like that. And, um, of course, they come to us to validate. And so we thought, you know, it's time. Absolutely. It's, it's time we, we, you know, bring some of these things out. Some are myths. Uh, some are truth. Um, some maybe are a little of each. So we thought we'd play a little factor crap. So we've got about 11 key points things that are extremely useful for you to have the right knowledge about um, that'll help you kind of guide your way through the recruiting process. Um, what do you think? I think that's really about it. Yeah, that pretty much hits the nail on the head. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it, really, Chuck, I mean, you're, you're, you're probably, I mean, I know my phone burns up, I mean, daily. And it, it, it's either the direct line into the office or it's my cell phone, Facebook, right? email. I know email, your email yeah. blows up. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. Um, luckily, a, a lot of the questions seem to be the same thing. So, obviously, this isn't just stuff that we want to force upon you. This is stuff that, if you know, one certain amount of people are asking, then there's probably a lot more out there that Absolutely. needs this information. So, yeah. let, let's uh, let's go ahead and get right on it. Um, our very first um, topic that that and th this one seems to come up quite a bit. If you're good enough athletically, the coaches will find you. Well, I think we're going to say that's factually crap. <laughs> <laughs> that's right how about that um the, the keys here is that yes okay we, we'll say yes as an answer that if you are good enough the coaches will find you that top nth percentage of the super blue chippers the guys that um you know whether they go on a recruiting website or hire a recruiting consultant or whatever these guys are so good that Everybody knows about them because of their statistics. And now we're not just talking football. We're not talking just baseball, basketball. We're talking all sports across the board. If you are good enough, the coaches can find you because your statistics will speak for themselves. The performance at, let's say, if you go to a travel tournament and you light it up, you know, you're pitching out of your gourd, uh, you're stroking the ball, whatever the case may be, there's certain ways from your athletic ability your skill set that will make you stand out and be in that top 20 across the nation. So for you out there, yes, the coaches will find you because they have tracking. Um, they have people that follow the tracking on the stats and, and the rankings and all that kind of stuff. Now, let's back up a little bit. That applies for that very small percentage of athletes out there. Everybody else it does not apply. They aren't just going to find you. They don't just take a pecking order and go, okay, one through however many, let's start somewhere on the list. For everybody else, it is imperative. And really, for the blue chippers, it's imperative that you are proactive reaching out with coaches. And you might say, oh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. You just said I don't need to do anything if I'm a blue chipper. Once you're recognized and dictated as that blue chipper, yes, that's correct. How do you know when you're a blue chipper? I mean, when, when, when you're in eighth grade, when you're ninth grade, yeah, you could be pretty good, but there comes a point in time where everybody kind of catches up in high school. At that point in time, everybody should be reaching out to college coaches, trying to make those connections, et cetera. On into your career, once you start getting that blue chip status, everybody's talking about you and, and you haven't had to do anything. Yes, you, you're pretty much done from, from a recruiting perspective as far as trying to reach out to coaches because they're going to be beating your door down. So at the very beginning, everybody needs to be doing that. Everybody needs to be reaching out to coaches and, and marketing yourself, getting yourself out there. Um, for, but, but again, for everybody else, 
uh, or, or for, for that very select few, um, you know, the coaches will locate you. So I hope we, we kind of put that to rest that, you know, it, it, it is a little bit of both. Absolutely. Uh, and, yeah. and, and, you know, we could go on and on. We could probably spend a whole show talking about just those angles. But just so everybody understands where the difference is on what side of the line you fall on. Right. <clears throat> All right, Chuck, what's next, dude? Well, the next the next thing that uh, comes in that I've, I've seen a lot um, and we're asked, especially with uh, with the program that we have here at, at View My Sport, is that well, why do I need a ViewMySport.com when these uh, college programs have huge, almost unlimited recruiting budgets? Um, and uh, my answer to that is, like the first one, actually crap. <laughs> <laughs> um, true that Division One programs and really all the schools, and I, I'm not going to limit like the comments to just Division One, but to, to all programs, um, unless you're playing a Division One basketball, football, um, um, and that sort of thing, uh, the budgets um, are, are are very small. I mean, the, the resources are not available for coaches to travel around the country and get on their private jets and head from you know Florida to Washington State or to Hawaii to, to seek out a, um, a you know potential um, right. athletic commitment right so that's why it's so important to have um, a profile and use the service such as, as viewmysport.com um, it, certainly as as technology has improved over the past uh, several years it, it makes actually the recruiting coordinator's job that much easier you bet. Uh, to at least narrow down the possible candidates from the, all the activity and all the things that come in through email or through social media or whatever um, and then from there if they happen to be planning a trip to the state of Florida that they, they can time and resources can be spent um, and organized much more efficiently um, with that so again big programs we ask they do have they do have budgets um, they do have um, some very um, outstanding resources available to them. But again, for, our, you know, 80% of the rest of the, the schools um, across the various divisions and NIA and, and, and junior college, sure. those resources are not as, as plentiful. And uh, so it's, that's why it's important to have your profile available to them. Small or non-existent, you know, Excellent. and I think one of the one of the myths, the true myth, is that you know, well, Division One, well, they have all the money and all their programs for, for the budgets. Now you could have a football program that's got you know maybe a big money recruiting budget, but maybe the gymnastics team they have nothing, right? They have nothing, and and that's why you hear too a lot of these schools where they uh, recruit out of their backyard out of necessity. Absolutely. They'd love to have you know the, the 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 school in Washington would love to have the kid from Florida. But they just don't have the resources to, to go out and see them or to lure them in. And I've heard that from – I've talked to a college coach um, in um, in California. They were uh, – you know, there was a, a student athlete who was from, I believe, here from Florida that was looking to um, attend a, a specific university in, in California. And the coach said, you know, we really only recruit the California area. One, it's, a, it's just a financial thing. I think the school mm -hmm. receives – um, some additional funding or, or something like that based on um, taking um, kids in the state st right. resident students. Um, so, you know, sometimes that we're just the, the coach in the college is just forced into just recruiting that backyard. Yeah, you're exactly right. That's a real good point. Yeah. Real good point. All right. Um, the next one that we have up. Um, and, and boy, we, we hear this a lot. You see this even out on the social media sites posted quite a bit. Um, Division two and three schools are uh, their athletes are weaker. Uh, they have weaker programs athletically. That is crap. <laughs> that is an infinite crap. Yeah. Um, here's the thing, you know, collectively, yes, you, you could have a Division two, II, Division three programs that have weaker athletes. Um, well, let's take Division three for example. Um, collectively. I think overall, you, you know, traditionally, you're going to have some weaker athletes because a lot of those student athletes going to those programs are looking at um, grades first and, and the, the, the academic aspect. Matter of fact, you can't get a scholarship at a Division three program for, for athletics. You, that's where you're getting your money from. So the, the main focus is on academics. Now, 
don't get offended. That doesn't mean that, um, you know, that, that uh, athletes that are in other programs aren't smart or that if you are a smart athlete, well, then you suck athletically. That is not what we're saying. We're just saying is that these programs, that is how they're designed. Um, we've seen some phenomenal talent come out of the Ivy League and Division Three, Division Two, and, and have successful NFL careers or, or you know Olympic careers or whatever the case may be. Um, so you, you know you just have to understand it, it, it's you know kind of your choice. I mean, I could be a phenomenal athlete. Uh, matter of fact, we've had plenty of examples. Great, uh, we had a kid two years ago. Great quarterback could have went to any D one school. No, he went to Harvard. He wanted to go to Harvard. He put his academics and his future beyond the sport ahead of, you know, just just what he could do athletically. So that was a perfect example where he made that choice. He had all the athletic skills. He just made that choice. Right. So but um, tr so traditionally, you're going to see, of course, a lot of your blue chips, you know, the, the primary athletes go to your division one school, the bigger programs. Um, but again, we're not saying that, that there's not good talent. And what you're seeing more and more as the years pass, because, and this is critical, um, you've seen smaller programs all of a sudden start popping up on ESPN and on TV, and you're hearing more and more about them. Um, what's been happening is as your number of athletes have multiplied dramatically, well, they can't all go to a D1 school. So there is a process of elimination so that that talent pool starts tr trickling down. So now you're getting a lot of what used to be traditionally Division One type athletes at your Division Two level and Division Three level, NAIA, uh, right. even JUCO. You know, so you're just seeing that that's taking place. The numbers are forcing the talent pool down. So pretty soon, you know, you could have a, a Ivy League or a D3 um, a program, you know, competing pretty heavily with a, a D1. I think there's probably going to be a day that that's going to happen. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The only thing I would add is in the in the idea that the, a Division Three or a lower division school is is weaker in that, <clears throat> um, you know, I. I seen visited you know some of these programs mm -hmm. and you see the passion and the intensity um that these athletes compete at at that level i don't care and if you're you know pro you're playing pro football playing pro basketball you know the athletes that participate at really at any division um are playing with as much heart as much intensity passion and passion exactly yeah. as as you know as a player just because it just because it's a division two or division three or nia school that doesn't matter that doesn't change the intensity the passion that the athlete has for participating in that uh, specific sport yeah we we talked to uh, a, a a son of a friend of ours and uh, he plays um, lower division football and we said, well, now, at what point, you know, you, you get down there and you're thinking, ah, you know, I'm not going to be on ESPN. I'm not going to be on TV. You know, you're not getting a lot of the media attention. He said, yeah, all that pretty much went out the window the first time I got my ass knocked out, you know. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, so I, I, uh, for, and now that's just using football as, as, right. as one. But, yeah, yeah, getting crushed is getting crushed. And um, either you have the passion to play and compete or you don't. You know, if it's all about just notoriety and all, well, you know, then then you're out there for a different reason. Right, exactly. So, exactly. Chuck, what's next, man? Well, I think we were going to move on to talking about uh, the 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 myth, or is it a reality that uh, all colleges um, offer athletic uh, scholarships? That's right. That's and right. Um, and to to say all, that's crap. Because no, uh, that's not just crap. That's uh, crap. Yeah. <laughs> that, um, as, as you know, if you've been following our program or or, or well versed into the recruiting process, not every school, not every program, can offer um, athletic scholarships. Prime example is Division Three, and we've, Roger's already alluded to it a little bit. That uh, a Division Three only has academic money. Um, they make it work. The Ivy Leagues they don't offer scholarships. They offer financial aid and, and grant. And, and those sort of things to, to make up the differences. Correct. Correct. Um, so, um, and then the other, the other component is that, um, you, because it, most programs, most athletic programs, uh, don't offer full ride, um, to make the money, athletic scholarship money last, uh, that money is divided amongst, you know, 20, 30, 40 people playing, 
um, who are, are participating in that particular sport. So other money becomes available, academic money, money or, you know, here in Florida, we have the, the Bright Future Scholarship. So there, there are other ways of receiving um, financial aid exactly. than, than full scholarship. Yeah, uh, and to add to that, Chuck, you know, and, and we, we see this a lot. You know, we, we hear people like, you know, I got a scholarship, I got a scholarship. And, 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 and I think most people's minds, when they hear scholarship, it's just automatically assume full ride. Right. And, and, and we, we have found in, in talking with college coaches and the athletes and the parents and whatnot, I mean, the reality is uh, the majority of time, unless you are a D1 athlete, the majority of the time it is a bare minimum partial scholarship. Um, it kind of alludes back to the budgets. I mean, some of these schools, I mean, they wanted to get the biggest bang for their buck. So they're jockeying pieces around trying to um, – you know, attract these kids and they might want a kid. They could offer him a scholarship. The kid's excited until he finds out it's only, you know, maybe a third scholarship. He, well, he wants the rest of the money. Maybe his grades aren't good enough to get it from an academic side at the school. You know, again, you, you find yourself at this point where, okay, I'm going to get um, uh, this little bit of scholarship money. It becomes a hell of a chess game for the coaches, for the programs that are out there. I tell you, for the parents and the athletes, you got to start weighing out, well, is a third scholarship at this program better than a half scholarship at this pro? I mean, and it, it is mind-blowing. You can't hire someone to tell you what to do. That You have to sit down and decide where are the pros and cons of the college, what beyond the sport, you know, what can you afford, you know, and, and like Chuck said, you know, like if you're in the state of Florida, Bright's Future, um, you, you've got every state. And, and, you know, matter of fact, on our site, in our resource bar, you can find a financial aid link. And you can actually go in there and find where other money is. And, man, I tell you what, if you're not doing that early, trying to find out where that money is that you can qualify for, to, it can make all the difference in the world if you go into your dream school or not. Um, if you have those other monies set, you could say, hey, you know what, I'll take that third scholarship because all the rest of the money is coming from, you know, X, Y, Z uh, financial aid or scholarship or whatever the case may be. Hot dog, what do you care? You're playing ball, you're not paying for the education or your parents aren't. So that's kind of the critical piece. But, um, yeah, you, you, you have got to dive in and find out what schools can offer what. And something that we found out, you might have this scholarship offer, and um, you might be all settled. You may have committed. They've committed you. Everybody's, you know, feeling good. And compliance comes in, and they do a final check to make sure all the paperwork and the right of money is allotted and that you haven't gone over budget, et cetera. And you'd be surprised how many times this happens where, oops, you're over X amount of dollars. Oh, now we have to cut that kid's scholarship. We said he was going to get a half. Now he's going to get about an eighth. Or maybe, guess what? We were carrying three people on scholarship. Now we have to let them go. We can no longer afford to cut, carry them on scholarship. If you think that it's all guaranteed and you're locked in forever, wrong. Right. Wrong. You really, really have to open your eyes and investigate and make sure what you're getting is what you're getting. So I, anyway, good points. You know, we, we can go on a lot about that, but uh, you know, we're, we're trying to uh, just give you kind of the, the basics. Right. Um, Fire away, Chuck. I think okay. you've got. You've yeah, got we've got one, one more. Here. One more here before we go into our um, our, our first break. Um, we we've come across. Um, I think I got a call just last week about um, someone asking, "How do college coaches help me uh, get into their school if they're on the bu bubble academically?" Um, and you know, my response was, "They're not." Um, the grades, I mean, the grades are, are going to, it's going to come down to that the grade is the deciding factor. You may have all the talent in the world. And I've come across this, we see this all the time. I talked to a, a coach just a, a few weeks ago who said he, you know, he screwed around in high school. He was a very gifted athlete. He was going he to go blew to, it. yeah, and he's going to a top program, um, football program um, in the state of um, Oklahoma. But he screwed around. And he didn't have the grades, and it things did not work out the way he had planned. So, college coaches aren't going to help you out if you're on that borderline because there are so many other good athletes, good academically standing athletes, that will will fill that spot if you don't have the grades. 
don't wait till your senior year to be now, oh, crap, I need to start thinking about grades. <laughs> Who's my guidance counselor? <laughs> yeah, really. You, you, you just can't, you can't do it, and you can't rely on the college code. They're not going to help you. Not gonna, your high school coach is not going to help you. That's right. You are going to help you. Parents, your parents are going to help you. But the bottom line is that you are responsible. You are ultimately responsible for how well um, you how you well you do in life, um, and that starts and that starts in the classroom. If it's a no brainer, I mean, if you're carrying an A or a B average, it's pretty much a no brainer um, that you're you're going to beat out somebody who's um, who's average, who's average, who's who's on the fence, um, who may or may not get in. So uh, uh, the so it is a myth. Um, no, no. It, I'm sorry. It's crap, crap. <laughs> that college coaches. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, that college coaches are going to help you um, in case you are on the fence academically. Yeah, you, you know, and I'm going to add to that. You know, okay. I, was, I was at a um, a little so- um, soccer tournament, and I overheard a little group of parents, and they were they were happened to be talking about one of the uh, one of the girls that that was out there playing, and she was a pretty good player. And and um, somebody asked about you know, well, what's her GP? And she goes, well, she's not the best student, but but you know, I mean, you know, she's she's so good. One of the coaches told her that you know they they they'd work with her, they'd work with her. And they're all under this premise that, oh, well, you know, as long as she's a good athlete, she'll get in. And, um, and again, that's crap. I mean, the fact is there are too many good athletes with good grades out there. So if you're a parent and you think that, ah, oh, no, no, you know, we'll work something out, you can't. And I tell you what, it's not like it used to be where that, that was allowed. I mean, the compliance is so strong now that that just doesn't happen. Now, you right. might think, yeah, wink, wink. Sure, it doesn't. I'm telling you, it doesn't. You have to have the grades, and the competition for these spots are so great now that that um, kids are getting it, and and the ones that uh, have the better grades, they're at the top of the list. Absolutely. So you're, you're you're right about Absolutely. that, and it is it is sad when you try to tell the parents, when you try to tell the athlete, they know everything, they know everything. I can't tell you how many parents that we've given the information about you know tutoring, proactive tutoring, and they two years later they still have not done a thing. So w- what the hell do we know? Right. I mean, what we you know, it's only our industry, you right. know. So so, you know, of course they'll <laughs> they'll be the, they'll be the ones sending us the emails and the phone calls next right. time going, "No, help yeah. us." That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, tell you what, we're, we're going to take a real quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about our athlete of the week and get into the rest of these maybe myths. Hmm. Mm, and maybe uh, not. we'll yeah, <laughs> we'll try to, you know, put them to bed or confirm them for you. So, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Are you a high school athlete, parent of a high school athlete, maybe a high school coach or a college coach looking for a high school athlete, or just a fan of high school and college sports? Then you need the View Recruit mobile recruiting app. It's got everything. Athletes can create profiles, including their highlight videos. They can use the Recruit Network to send their profiles directly to college coaches. If a coach likes your profile, great. You get a notice directly on your mobile device and receive an email to boot. College coaches can receive updates directly on their devices and use the search function to find the talent that fits their program. Whether you're an athlete or a college coach, it's like having your very own recruiting department right at your fingertips. Download the View Recruit app now on iTunes for your iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch. Be part of the number one high school athletics and college coaching network. Get it today, the View Recruit mobile recruiting app. Hello and welcome back. I'm Roger Tillis, your host of The Breakdown, here, of course, with Chuck Olesker. There you go. Never, never, never could have said <laughs> it better than that. That was awesome. Good job. I'm nah. speechless. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, uh, it's funny. We, we were having a little, uh, a little fun during the break and started getting into some discussions. And as always, you know, our breaks, we, we, we tend to bring <laughs> up the best points. So we thought, all right, let's just roll with this and get, right. get things going. Tell you what, before we start back in, oh, yeah. in uh, putting some of this information to rest, uh, we want to talk about our Athlete of the Week um, outstanding individual. Chuck, who do we have this week? Uh, well, I tell you, uh, folks, pay attention to this young man. Um, he is going to be a player. He is a player, but he is going to be a big-time player here in the not-too-distant future. Darius Smalls, the class of 2015, is a defensive lineman from Sandalwood High School here in Jacksonville, Florida. Local boy. Local boy. But let me tell you what. This young man, six foot three, 320 pounds, having uh, looks from FSU, Miami, Florida, Ohio State, 
you can kind of get the idea that he's the list a, goes on and on. Yeah, he's a he's a as a Dick uh, Dick Vitale would say he's a PTP or you know prime prime time player man. He's <laughs> this, he's this, beef. He's he huge. he's gonna be he's gonna he's gonna be a, um, a force to be reckoned with uh, for the offense somewhere um, against offenses I should say. So congratulations to uh, Darius for being this week's ViewMySport.com's athlete of the week. Yeah, hot dog. Sort of an oxymoron, you know. <laughs> it's like the giant guy named Tiny, you know. This That's right. giant guy is named Smalls. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Outstanding. And yeah. I think he's with a pretty pretty good program. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Coach Geis over there at Sandwood, well, they've, they've really kind of – recharge the element over there and, and they're all about very committed um you know even through social media and whatnot and, and you know i've been yes. able to keep up and uh, they had a good start so yep. uh you know hopefully uh and, and of course they've got several good uh, players um they had demarcus walker who started yep. for fsu the other night um uh against pitt so uh, hopefully he'll be able to follow in those footsteps and uh, land in the right spot absolutely keep your grades up yep. darius grades grades you really want all those those hot picks Get the grades up, man, and you will be a slam dunk. So, right. anyway, I'll get off my soapbox. Okay, you know me, grades, grades, grades. All right, our next, uh, our next piece that uh, we have, and, and man, I get this a lot. I get this a lot through our uh, social media, through Facebook and whatnot. Now, I'll, I'll get these comments all the time. If you receive a letter from a coach, you are being recruited. That's crap. All right. Now, let me say this. That doesn't mean every person who gets a letter is not being recruited. You can get a letter and still be recruited, but understand something. These letters that go out, 99.9% .9 of the letters are going out to the athletes, and they are coming off of marketing lists. So your name was picked up through databases online. Uh, you went to a camp. I mean, all of these lists, all this data is stored and is out there for these schools to grab hold of. Um, they're going to fire off these letters to as many kids as they can. They want you interested in their college. It's not just sports. It's about the college as well. So they're going to fire these letters off. And you say, but but it had his, the coach's signature on it. You know, you can print out about as many original signature <laughs> letters as you want um, online. I mean, believe me, these things are designed to look personal, the comments they make. Now, with that said, Let's say you're a prime prospect for, for and a coach really, really likes you. He may take the time to send you a handwritten note, and, and it's personal, and it maybe talks about meeting you at a camp or something like that. Okay, if, if a coach truly takes the time to give you a handwritten note, um, first of all, they're probably going to be on the phone with you anyway. You're going to already know this guy. But if he takes that time, you could probably feel really good that they're interested in you. That's separate. But all these right. letters, I see pictures of, of kids on Facebook holding up all these letters going, yeah, it's raining. You know, well, guess what? You know, you just got probably the same letter that 8,000 of your friends just got. <laughs> right. You know, I mean, and, and that's the, the purpose is to get you hooked, get you interested. Um, now, again, I'm not saying that every individual who gets these letters isn't a serious recruit. You can still be a serious recruit. But um, let's put things in perspective. My kid, when he was in sixth grade, got a letter from Duke. All right? For football, no doubt. Never even played football. You know, sixth grade, no. No. It just happened. He Somehow his information got tied into a list, and he ended up getting a letter. So be careful. Parents, be careful about being, you know, be, you know bragging about all the attention your son's getting or your daughter's getting. Um, athletes. Don't get too wrapped up. Don't stop your your efforts of your recruiting process when you start getting these letters. All right? Take them for what they are at face value. Now, our tip, what we feel you should be doing, if you get one of these letters, great. Find out who the coach is. Find out what their email address is. Find out what their phone number is, which, by the way, every bit of that information, real time, you can get right on viewmysport.com. Pick up the telephone and call that coach acknowledge with that coach coach i got your letter just wanted to say thanks so much for thinking of me for considering me for your program you know act as though it is a personal letter coach probably won't know you from the next person but take that initiative that's assuming you get to talk to the coach you'll probably end up talking to a voicemail or an assistant and having to leave a message but if you want to turn that letter into something more you have to take the Absolutely. efforts you have to be proactive what do we always say often and early that's right so if you do have your name on one of these lists, 
turn it around. Maybe it's a school that you didn't even consider. Great, turn it around. Send your profile out to them. Pick up the phone. Call them. Start getting that relationship started. That's how you take a generic letter and maybe turn it into something a little more personal. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Good so point. Good stuff. Take that to the bank. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, something that um, that I've, I've seen um, a, a few times um, here just recently, a few. just, just a few, few. Um, is that uh, you know athletes will say, "Hey, uh, you know my high school coach knows better than anyone whether I'm not uh, whether I'm qualified to to be um, a uh, college athlete." Well. Factually crap. Factually, yeah. More, probably Quite, more, probably more uh, crap than it's quasi crap. <laughs> quasi, I think. Cra- quasi crap. <laughs> quasi crap. I like that. <laughs> Let's put that up. There. <laughs> the um, the coach may know you athletically, and if the coach has been around for a long period of time and have seen the types of athletes that have come through their program, um, and know where students and athletes have had attended college, they they might have a good idea of where you are athletically. But I don't know that the coach will know how you are as a person, how you are as a student, how you are as a, um, as a community leader. And so there, there, there's many other factors that the coach may or may not know about you. Um, and in uh, the only way, again, the only judge that's better at that is, is yourself. Um, or, you know, your team of people behind you. you know, we talk counselor. about guidance counselor, the, um, the coach, the, the athletic trainer, the, you know, the principal, if you've been fortunate to, or unfortunate enough to get into that principal's office. <laughs> um, Hopefully for the right things. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, and then, the, but the, again, the bottom line is, is yourself. You know, you, you look down deep inside and do you believe truly in your heart that you have the ability um, and the potential to play um, at a high high level athletic program, and um, I you know I don't know that the coach will necessarily uh, know uh, for certain. And they may guide you into you know if you think you've got dreams, and ambitions of Division One, and reality is you're more you know you while well, we've we've just talked about the lower divisions, the lower divisions yeah. that it's you know it's not any less. I mean everybody still plays with a tremendous amount of passion. But maybe maybe Division Two or Division Three or NIA is is a better uh, program for you. So that's where that that college or that excuse me the high school coach can uh, advise you. Yeah, and and I want to add something to that because and understand we're we're not uh, we're not saying all inclusive like all coaches don't know what they're doing or what they're talking about. That's that's not what we're saying. We're saying in in general there's just so many components that dictate whether or not you are, you know, a good piece or good fit in a certain school. They don't know what your social scheme is or what the social scheme of every college is either. Right. I mean, there's those other things that fit you in. Now, again, you know, the, the, the issue seems to be more athletically. Well, you know, they can, some coaches can, can probably be a pretty good rule of thumb on, on, on whether or not, you know, you belong in a certain, maybe even whether you're a, a division one or division two, you know, caliber. Those coaches are far and few between. If you think about it, a lot of coaches also teach. Uh, gee, um, oh, we we just met a lacrosse coach who never who never coached lacrosse. Right. Who got into lacrosse? Well, now how can that person That's tell right. whether or not you're you know game for a certain level at the collegiate level? That well, they don't. Unfortunately, some of the coaches will still try to carry that yoke and and, and, and assume that responsibility. They might be thinking that they're helping when actually they could be hindering you. Right. So so don't sit back and think, ah, the college coach has got me covered. Some do, most don't, and at different levels. So, you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket, as they say. Right. You know, and that, that's that's critical. But that's that's a good thing to know about because, again, especially for the younger high school kids, the kids that are just coming out of middle school going into high school, they think that, that you know, that those coaches are, are, are God, that they're, they're, they run the show. For some, they do. You know, some really have that um, skill set, but most don't. So right. just be very careful. If they do, great. That's gravy. Yeah, That's absolutely. bonus. But yep. but don't don't rely on that 100 percent for sure. Right. Good point. All right, brother. Here's Let's get one. into this one. <laughs> yeah. This one. Yeah. Hang on. We, boy, talking about something we, uh, we we get into quite a bit. Um, college coaches can contact me anytime they want. That's crap and that's an obvious one i think but for the newbies out there they have to understand that that there are periods of time 
when the college coaches can connect with you, um, be it phone, be it email, uh, be it you know in person. Our suggestion for you to know who can do when um, is to go to the eligibility site. The NCAA and the NAIA both have their own eligibility centers. One does not cover the other. All right. Matter of fact, the NAIA, although they do have the eligibility center and rules and regulations, they're a lot looser than the NCAA. Right. Um, what the NCAA coaches are handcuffed with, uh, a lot of the um, rules and regulations in NAIA uh, are extremely loose. And, and so there's more opportunity. But um, what our suggestion is, because it changes each year, the calendar is a little different. You want to go to the NCAA website or the NCAA eligibility or NAIA eligibility center, get their uh, recruiting guides. Um, you can go onto our website. We have all the links for that. And it will break down the calendar by sport because each sport is yeah. different. Um, there's certain times of the year for certain sports and for certain coaches. There's contact periods, dead periods, all of that. Um, you might be sitting there going, contact period, dead period, what, what is all this? We actually posted um, a glossary, and you can find it there on, on those eligibility center websites. They have a glossary of all the terminology, and parents and athletes, especially if you're new to the process and, and you're coming into high school, we recommend highly that you look at that information and get familiar with the terminology and get familiar with those calendars that'll tell you when a coach can talk to you when they can't how they can talk to you as far as you know in person email etc exactly. etc so exactly. um that you that's like a fundamental you need to do that right off the bat right off the bat before absolutely. anything else absolutely so, all right what's next chuck i'm a senior in high school and now I should start my recruiting process. <laughs> Horse what? crap. <laughs> that's an emphatic, that's crap. <laughs> Folks, if you're waiting until your senior year to start the recruiting process. Big mistake. The, the likelihood of you landing some sort of, you know, even if you get book money is, is very, 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 very small. Uh, the reality of the recruiting process is that it's – that athletes have to start earlier every year because the competition is becoming greater and greater every year. Relationships. Um, exactly. Developing the relationships. You have to, you know, you, you need to really start where, I mean, we're having sixth, seventh, eighth graders get it, you know, start the process to start to look, start to think about their future. And that really is um, what's defining the recruiting process these days. Um, you know, by the ninth and 10th grade, um, you know, we're already hearing of verbal commitments and, and of course it's nothing's committed until you actually sign the paper. Um, but you have to, you have to start early again, as we've said early and often, early and often, yep. get, a, get in contact with the, the various programs that you're interested in, um, that you might be interested in, take those tours, you know, look at the facility, look at the, 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 the um, programs that you might be interested in, in studying and pursuing. Sure. Um, but you can't wait. You can't wait till your senior year because it's not going to happen because by then you're going to think, well, you know, why? How, then you're going to be all upset at the world because why, you know, why didn't my coach handle this or why didn't, um, you know, somebody help me with this? The, again, recruiting is your responsibility. Um, if you wait, you know, the old snooze you lose and that's what's going to happen if you wait till your senior year to uh, start the recruiting process. Sure, sure. And, and to add to that, just uh, you may not become the ultimate athlete and student until your senior year. May, maybe you know you blossom during the summer right. between your junior and senior year. That's all well and good. And, and college coaches understand you're going to be progressing. You're going to be getting better, at least you hope, especially if you're going to be considered a, a serious prospect for their program. But the fact is um, – you know, you need to at least start the relationship aspects. You need to be waving the flag in front of them, letting them know, hey, here I am, and watch me develop because I do have some raw talent, right. et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Chuck's exactly right. you got to start early, and then, you know, if you develop, great. Now, with that said, that doesn't mean that, gee, what if I just started playing football as a senior? Let's say I was a, a, a wrestler. I wasn't even in, you know, I, I was a diamond in the rough that I was discovered oh, senior Marco. year. Yeah, Marco. yeah, we had we had a kicker who uh, start. Yeah, he didn't start um, kicking in, in uh, high school football until his senior year. Okay, that is a rare exception. It can happen. You can 
be discovered, but you have to be really, really good to stand out above and beyond everybody else because everybody else has already been, you know, laying that groundwork. They've already right. had that relationship going. So, yeah, we're, we're not saying that, you know, gee, if you never, you know, if you never do anything until your senior year, you have zero chance. It's just extremely rare. Again, the, the, all of these rules and things that we're talking about um, are, are for the norm. So, right. you know, please, please don't wait till the last minute. That's basically like Chuck exactly. said, you know. Yeah. All righty. Here's one that's near and dear to me. We talk <laughs> about this probably about in every every show, you know, and, and we already alluded to it a little bit um, previously. You know, grades don't matter. If you're a good enough athlete, they'll find a spot for you regardless of your grades. Again, an eloquent and emphatic, that's crap <laughs> that is that's probably one that's got the most crap on it then <laughs> is, is there such a thing that's yeah. crappier than all the rest yeah, that's crappy crap fact is grades matter grades matter tremendously um again the competition for these coveted scholarships are so great the coaches you know it used to be well you know who's better the you know the, the best athletes get the scholarships so then it was like wow they're all pretty good now what well now we have to start looking at grades Grades are the biggest determining factor right now because it says something about your character, the type of person you are, you know, um, your work ethic. Uh, your work ethic, you know, you're not going to be a problem. You're intelligent enough to absorb what the coaches are teaching you. Um, I'll use football as an example. Holy cow, if you've never taken a look at a playbook or looked at schemes or talked to coaches, it, it, it's another language. Mm -hmm. And you have to, just to, to excel in the sport itself, you have to have a level of intelligence. Um, it's become that way. And again, colleges want an individual representing the college. And you do that not just by what you do in your sport, but what you do in the classroom, what you do in the community, everything that encompasses what that, that um, college is about. So these grades, I mean, when they're looking at down the list and they say, here's 100 kids, and they're all pretty damn good. Uh, but, you know, this kid's got a 2.1, 2.3, 2.6, 3.0. Uh, now we're getting more into the range. We, look at this, 3.5, 3.7, 3.8, 4.0. They're going to take the kids naturally that have the better GPAs, the better standardized test scores, things like that. So you and, and you can't wait, like Chuck was saying about the other thing. You can't wait till your senior year. You have to jump on this as a freshman. You can't go in with a 2.0 into your senior year and think you're magically going to become, um, you know, a studious individual and get that uh, GPA up, up to a 3.5 or better. Tell you what, from my experience and from talking to coaches, especially the NAIA, you hold down a 3.5 or better, you can all, I'm not going to say you can pretty much guarantee it, but I'll tell you what, it's pretty darn as close to a guarantee as you can get. Um, I know that with NAIA colleges, most of their money for their athletes come from the academic side. Mm. Now, they have a little bit of a, an athletic budget, unlike the, the Division threes. But uh, talking about trying to get yourself a full ride, you know, you get a little bit of money from the athletic side. The rest of it comes from the academic. All of a sudden, you do have a full ride. I mean, the, the total encompasses that. Um, mm. Again, your your uh, Division three, it's all academics. So if, if you want to play Ivy Leaguers, any any one of these other uh, Division three schools, if that's where your athletic ability is, you got to have the, the higher GPA. So start at the beginning. Start in your freshman year. Get your study habits down. Parents, check the egos. And don't worry. Don't wait for your kids to start floundering academically. Start putting them in some of these different tutoring uh, classes, these study habits where, where they work on your skills from studying and how, how they approach doing the classwork and how they approach um, learning in the classroom. Uh, become friends with the um, guidance counselors. We say mm. that all the time, Chuck. I mean, yeah, that's absolutely yeah. build your team for your academic side as you would on the athletic side. You're spending money to go to camps, you're spending money to go to combines, you're spending money to go to these elite training facilities. Um, you know, ah, three nights a week, I'm at the, uh, you know, the high intensity training elite center and things like that. Great. Why don't you throw in there a night or two of, you know, better study habits. And maybe if there's, uh, if you're more um, a a mathematically inclined, but maybe your, your literature and, and English and things like that are, are maybe that not where your head's at. Maybe you focus on that so that you don't 
go into your junior and senior year struggling academically. So, right. you know, anyway, that's um, that's about all we're, we're going to say on that. Grades matter. Absolutely. And, and, and you can't say, well, that takes second place to me improving my 40 time or my, my uh, y- you know, sprint time in the pool or whatever. No, no. Academics got to come first. Absolutely. Absolutely. All righty. Uh, Chuck, I believe yeah. you're going to wrap us up. Yeah, well, one final, one final item, um, one final myth that we've uh, seen come across. Um, we hear that, oh, Coach Chuck, I've sent my profile out to ten different places, and and I'm just not hearing anybody. No one's from calling me, and and, and so <laughs> I, I'm not very good. Um, I'm not good enough to play in, in college. Well, this is one of those. No, I don't think it's not even quasi crap. It's, it's what you make of it, you know the the effort. Pseudo crap. Yeah, it's, we'll yeah, say well, pseudo, pseudo crap. crap. Yeah, <laughs> it's the effort that you put into it. You get out what you put into it. So if you've, you know, if you've kind of, oh, I've taken I've taken ten minutes and I sent a profile out last week and you haven't done anything to follow up. Um, you know that that's that's on you. Again, we've always said that the recruiting process begins and starts and and uh, evolves around you um got to pick up the phone man right you got to pick up the phone you got to send out the emails you got to get on the you know the social media use all the resources that are available to you, you it may be that you haven't sent the prof- your profile to the right college you're you're out there you're you're good enough to play if you feel that you're good enough to play if you have your coaches feel you're good enough to play to, at whatever level um, it, it's just finding the right match, and that's why you – not to say that you're going to now take every coach at every program at every level and just blanket them with profile um, information. That and That's not very smart. Again, that's it's trying to be organized and st- managing the whole process. Um, but you've got to be smart about um, who you contact, and it's it's got to be more than you know one a week or or one a month or whatever the case may uh, case may be. Uh, you know, again, as we talked about with the budget, these coaches don't have all the have all the financial resources you think they they may, and so it's harder for them to get out and 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 see potential athletes, potential recruits, um, and so that's why it's important for you to be proactive and get um, your information out to them. Um, in, in any way you can, so you so you become a, a blip on the radar screen. So yeah, you're um, you're you're exactly right, Chuck. They you know, and we hear from coaches all the time, and that's all we do. We, I mean, we, you know, that's part of what we do is is you know get feedback from the college coaches, and and we're pretty in tune. You know, here's the thing: you can you can send your information. They're getting thousands of emails. Um, they can't possibly check out every single one, although they do have some help. You know, there there's assistance, right. recruiting assistance, and whatnot. I mean, they they try to divvy through all that stuff. The thing is, you don't want to just be part of the flow. You want to stand out. You want to swim against the current, and that's where you know sending complete information, using correct grammar, um, your salutations. Um, yeah, I know all my information is in the profile, but I'm still going to put my full name and my email and my phone number um, in my closing comments. Uh, with the, with my message with the profile, I am going to pick up the telephone and call. And if I get their voicemail, I'm going to leave an articulate message. I'm going to try to make an impression with that opportunity. And then I'm probably going to call them again the next week. And I'm going to call them the next week after that. And then if I have an update on my profile, I'm going to send it to them again and then call again. These are the things that you have to do. Now, I'm going to add something to this, Chuck, because okay. we hear this we hear this a lot too. Well, I'll just hire uh, a recruiting no. service to yeah. do this for me, and, and, and I'm, 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 I'm perfect then. I'm, then I have no problem because they have all the connections. That's the biggest load of crap that you could ever believe in. Here's the thing. That's super-duper pooper that's, crap. Yeah, <laughs> that's super pooper. <laughs> the coaches want to talk to you. They want to talk to the athlete. Now, we believe that the, the, the parents certainly have a right to call these coaches as well and maybe ask the same questions that their kids do, kind of compare answers, make sure that everybody's on the up and up. That's fine and dandy. But if you think that just because you pay fees to recruiting companies um, that they've got all the connections and they can do it all, tell you what, 
a lot of college coaches don't want to talk to these guys because they know, well, you're just calling because you're getting right. paid. And their phones don't work any more magical than yours do. And, and I'm telling you, if you're calling and you're leaving a message, and that's going to make a bigger impact to the coach than having somebody from XYZ recruiting firm calling and leaving a message. Exactly. Um, you know, the phone's ringing. You know, the coach isn't going to look and go, oh, good, it's so-and-so, you know. Now, that doesn't mean that there can't be relationships. So, you know, coach might have a friend who works for a firm that, well, well, you know, firm aside, it's the guy that he's interested in. But you just don't know that. You don't have control relying on somebody else. So you need to take the time to do it yourself. It's your bloody scholarship. Right. It's it's your name. It's your character. And how does some paid individual know what's a good fit as far as a college goes? Absolutely. Oh, but I filled out their questionnaire and I gave them the information. So what? It's not a dating service. Like, that works out real well anyway. Yeah. The fact is, you need to go to these schools. You need to take the visits. You need to talk to the people. You need to meet the coaches, meet the admissions people. You need to do the full package to make sure you're a good fit so that you are spending the time. You know, they say work hard, but we say work smart. Like Chuck um, talked about already, you know, make sure that you have the right colleges and coaches that you're sending the information to. Don't just send it 6 to 60, cripple, blind, or crazy, whatever works. Well, that's all great, and that's well and good because, you know, you don't plan on following up on it anyway, so you figure, eh, what's the old adage? Throw some, throw yeah. it on the wall and see what sticks. Right. No, that doesn't work. All right, that's not going to work. You need to have a focused effort, and you have to handle it. Get your parents to help you, support you, prepare you of how to ask questions to these coaches and things like that. That's what gets it done. And even then, when you do it the right way, things just may not work right. out. You, you, you know, you may be started too late or maybe, you, you know, there's just so many in the same, uh, the, you know, looking for that same scholarship. You just happen to find yourself at the end of the line, you know, right. but, but don't not get it because you didn't put forth the correct effort. Absolutely. That, that's really our bottom yeah. line. Yep. That's our yep. bottom line. Yep. So. Tell you what, brother. That was we hit we hit on a lot of yeah, points. Yeah, we got some good stuff. Yeah, a lot of crap. A lot of crap, <laughs> a lot out, of crap there. out there. But we hope as we, you know, kind of shuffled through it, we found a few ponies here and there. Um what's the old joke, you know? The kid that wanted the uh pony for Christmas and all he got was a pile of poo. They found him Christmas morning digging through it because he figured there's gotta be a yeah, pony here somewhere. That's right. Well, we we think we've unearthed a few ponies for you. We got enough information out there. Yeah, I think you get the point. Right. If we need to be clearer. If we need to repeat ourselves and you don't have a rewind button to watch this show, then send in emails, go to viewmysport.com, click on contact us, fire over your questions, you know, information, feedback, whatever it is that we can help you with. That's why we're here. We have a whole bevy of advisors for all sports. So bevy. anything that you need, you like that bevy? Bevy. Um, you know, we're here to help. That's Absolutely. that's the bottom line. Absolutely. Keep those questions coming. I mean, that's that's what we, we thrive on and helping helping the student athlete and the parents out and uh, don't hesitate to uh, there, you know, as we always heard as students, there is no dumb question. That's right. So keep them coming. Yeah. It might be dumb people trying to answer them, but you know, <laughs> uh, now, <laughs> now we, um, again, we do use our advisors. We go to some fantastic uh, resources to make sure Absolutely. that we're getting you the right information. So anything we're sharing with you, this is factual stuff that has worked, is working, will continue to work. These aren't just opinions. You know, they're, we're not paid to deliver a special message. We're here to give you the reality. May not like it, may mean that you have a little work to do ahead of you, but by God, if you follow what we're saying, you're going to be successful. Exactly. So, exactly. I think that's it, brother. All right, man. As we always say, um, you know, as you go through the recruiting process, as you go through and experience uh, your high school career, get into college and whatnot, just to remember, Enjoy the ride, and please stay tuned for our show for next week. Take care, everybody.